Well, good afternoon and welcome to Lits and RV, where today we are broadcasting live in our marketing studio here at our all new dealership, only one mile north of the Winnebago Motorized Coach Division of Winnebago Industries, based right here in Forest City, Iowa. I want to welcome everyone to today's live monthly interactive presentation, where today is all about tires, uh, tire care, tire maintenance, and some products that we have that can enhance the life of your tires. As we do with all of our live interactive presentations each month, really what makes these so interactive is the value that we can provide in terms of covering those questions that are important to you, our guests. So as we do that, I just want to welcome everyone. Uh, a few of our team members that are with us today, I want to welcome uh, Heidi Thompson. She is our Vice President and General Manager. And as she does every month, she's going to moderate our chat for us. Uh, so as you have questions that come in, uh, whether you're watching today on our website, on Litson.com, uh, your chat box will be off to the right. We don't require any information. Uh, you can very simply sign up to uh, submit your questions live to us. On Facebook Live, if you're watching there, uh, you can actually just comment in uh, below the live stream. And if you're watching on YouTube Live, you can use the chat box off to your right. I also want to welcome the, the team behind the camera that really makes all of our great content and media creation for you on our Litson.com website. Uh, I want to welcome Hope Litson, uh, who is our marketing director, uh, Maggie Bricer, who is our marketing manager, and also Rhonda Gertis today, uh, who is actually filming for us today. She is our marketing and special events coordinator. So as we do every month, uh, we could do this same type of a live interactive presentation in the comfort of your own home or office on any of our in-stock RVs that we have here only one mile from Winnebago Industries, uh, from the comfort of your own home or office uh, with any of our factory trained RV sales consultants. Uh, we can literally bring in any type of an RV that we have in stock and show you the things that are important as to how you're going to use the RV and we literally do that on almost a daily basis. In fact, we'll be doing one right after today's uh, live webcast on tire care. Uh, so again, be sure to chat your questions in live, um, and as we do with all of our live interactive presentations, we will archive this video for later viewing uh, in our video library on Litson.com. So I know we already had a lot of questions that have come in um, as we announced today's live webcast, so we're going to cover those as we go. Uh, but today we're going to talk about tires. Uh, tires are literally the second highest maintenance cost that you'll have with respect to an RV. So it makes sense to maintain that investment. Uh, we do have some products that we truly believe in. Uh, these are not money makers for us here at the dealership. By, so by no means is today a sales pitch. These are things that we truly believe in and use on an everyday basis. As Winnebago's largest dealer in North America, we literally have every Tom, Dick and Harry that comes into our dealership on a daily basis wanting us to offer their products. I always have two firm rules with any of our partners that we have. Uh, the first is that they provide us the product, we use it, and we determine whether or not there's going to be value for our guests. These are all products that we use on a daily basis and they can be used to increase the life of your tires. So we're going to try to break this down into three segments today. Uh, the first thing that we're going to cover is multi-seal, which seems like a foreign concept for many, and I'll explain why here in a second. Uh, the second piece of tire care that we're going to cover is nitrogen in your tires. And then we're going to wrap up with tire pressure monitoring systems. How are we doing so far? Good? Great. Okay. So the first concept that, that we want to cover today is multi-seal. And this is going to be a foreign concept for many of you as it was uh, for Heidi and I uh, when we first demoed this product a couple of years ago. So multi-seal is a run-flat technology. It is a tire sealant that can be placed inside your tires that literally will self-heal any wounds, any punctures, any nails, any screws up to 5 eighths of an inch. And a little bit of background on why you may not know what multi-seal is and a little bit of background on the company. So multi-seal multi is a 35 year old company. It's been in business for over 35 years. They developed and were requested to develop multi-seal, which is a DuPont Kevlar chemical that is literally placed inside your tires. It's a loose chemical. It's not an adhesive. So as you roll up and down the aisles at Target or Walmart, it is not an adhesive 
fix-a-flat that you may see in some of the discount stores. It is a loose, non-freezing tire sealant. It is DuPont Kevlar based and it was actually developed for the US and UK military uh, during the Gulf Wars uh, in that 1990 to 1992 era. As they were progressing over different terrains, obviously it would place our troops in harm's way if they did have a flat tire. This was a product that was developed by DuPont Kevlar uh, actually for our military. The reason why not many people know that it even exists is because you cannot use it in your light duty passenger car or truck. And the reason for that is because light duty passenger cars and trucks, similar to the vehicle that you drove today, has an internal tire pressure monitor. So as that is on the back side of the stem, uh, literally multi-seal will cover that stem um, as we actually tested uh, when we first went live with the product and literally, unfortunately, it was on Heidi's personal vehicle. So it cannot be used in light duty passenger cars that you would drive uh, such as today. Uh, it can be used, however, in the RV industry uh, when you have a vehicle that doesn't have an internal tire pressure monitor, which is the majority of all the RVs that are out there. So within the Winnebago lineup, we cannot use multi-seal in products such as the Winnebago Travato or the Winnebago Revel because they have built-in tire pressure monitors just like you have in your light duty passenger car or truck. With the majority of our RVs, travel trailers, utility trailers, um, uh, power sports equipment, all of those tire pressures are on the outside of the stem, which we'll cover here in a little bit when we get into tire pressure monitoring systems. So again, it can be used in the majority of the RV lineup. Most people don't know what multi-seal is because it can't be used in light duty passenger cars or trucks. So again, the, the concept is that what we're trying to do is ensure that we address the fear that RVers have. The fear is, and, and it's the same fear that Hope and I and our family had when we went out for two weeks last year, is we place our family in harm's way if we have a blowout. Uh, we have downtime from vacation uh, if we do have a leak or a flat tire when we're on the side of the road. So again, the concept is that multi-seal, uh, which we inject into the tires, will self-heal wounds up to five-eighths of an inch, uh, and it will extend the life of your tires. And when you actually have um, a puncture or an impact, you won't even know it. And the beauty of it is that the, the DuPont Kevlar that self-heals that wound lasts for the life of the tires. And I see the laser stare, so that means we might have a question or two. I think to clarify, this isn't going to fix your tires so that you're traveling to get a spare immediately. It will, con how many times will it, excuse me, repair the tire? Yeah, so, and that's a great question. So it is permanent. It is a self-healing wound for the life of your tires. So as you see different types of adhesive kits, fix the flats, uh, you'll see some of the, the more inexpensive, cheap things that they sell at Target or Walmart. Like Heidi mentioned, that is just a bridge to get you uh, to a tire repair situation. Whereas with multi-seal, literally, it can self-heal hundreds of wounds. Um, as our display stand here shows, and I'll puncture this here in a second to show you, but literally, this tire has been punctured probably hundreds of times, and uh, we've not added air to it. Uh, you can actually see uh, the DuPont Kevlar as it dries and self-heals that wound. You can actually see it surface on the tire. Um, a good example is um, Hope and I and our family we went out for two weeks last August. It literally was the longest vacation our, our marriage has ever taken beyond five days. And obviously we didn't have a lot of time, nor did I want to spend any downtime. Um, I have a firm belief that I will never travel in an RV without multi-seal because I don't want to place my family in harm's way if I have a blowout. Uh, but secondly, I don't want that downtime uh, to be on the side of the road uh, or even to have to find a tire repair shop. So when we went out for two weeks, I absolutely insisted uh, that we had multi-seal and nitrogen before we left the driveway. Uh, we went out for two weeks. We never had an issue. However, when we returned, we did take the Winnebago Vista uh, that we took and placed it up on a lift and I looked at the tires and we did have a couple of the white self-healing wound DuPont Kevlar material sticking out of the tire, which meant we'd had a couple of punctures, but we didn't even know it. 
and that's really the whole goal with multi-seal. Again, it's not a money maker for us. It's by no means a sales pitch. It's just something that we truly believe in here at Litz and RV. Does it help with the sidewalls? It will help with the sidewalls. Literally, any time that you see air leaking um, and it, with an RV, um, whether it's in the bead, whether it is a puncture, uh, whether you have a leaky valve, it will self-heal that. However, if you have an impact from the side, it will still self-heal, but it's got to be up to five-eighths of an inch. Five-eighths of an inch is, is how much this type of chemical that multi-seal uses with the RV industry will self-heal. So this might get into chemistry for you, but does it stay loose and liquid if it's healing the sidewalls? it maintains the product to be free flowing inside and, and how does that not eventually affect wheel tire uh, balance? Yeah, so good question and that is one of the most common questions we get is does it affect tire balance? So the way that multi-seal works is it is a loose flowing chemical. It will not freeze and that's another common question that we get. Uh, it will not freeze. So as the tire goes through its revolutions, it literally will spread out and bond to the actual rubber that is inside, um, bond from the revolution, not from the adhesive. And so what ends up happening is as that is spinning inside the wheel, um, it will literally move to any location where there is an air departure. Um, the amount of multi-seal, um, which we place in a tire, um, is dictated based on the tire size. So multi-seal has provided us a uh, tire size chart. So whether you have 295, 80, 16s, or what you have, that dictates how much of the multi-seal we draw inside this pneumatic installation. So this is a pneumatic installation cart where we literally pump the multi-seal uh, from a drum directly in through the valve stem and then into your tires. And again, the amount that we draw is dictated based on the size of the tire. And we don't have any tire limitations. Uh, they can be as small as a lawnmower tire that you may see in uh, Home Depot or Lowe's, um, from a golf cart tire to a power sports trailer, um, to a power sports utility vehicle, um, to a travel trailer, all the way up to our largest tag axle Class A diesel pushers. Because remember, this was actually brought into the retail segment uh, in 2006 and it was brought into the retail segment actually in agriculture and mining, not necessarily the RV industry. Uh, Multi-seal approached the RV industry about two years ago. Um, I was way impressed at the demo that we had and the reports that we have on the road are that it just works. Because in actuality, the holes that they were repairing in the agricultural and military segment were much larger than the 5 eighths of an inch. They were, and actually inside the military installations for Multi-seal, um, it was actually a much larger amount of chemical, and so that with the larger tires that we have, obviously, in the, in the military, um, with that um, amount of multi-seal, it would self-heal greater than 5 eighths of an inch, but that's really what's sized for a tire that's anywhere between 16 and 22 and a half inches. How do I know if I have internal tire pressure monitor or I don't? Yeah, that's actually a really good question, and um, most likely, um, the easiest way to tell uh, would be to go through your instrumentation cluster. And if you can toggle through and see your tire pressures, uh, then you have an internal tire pressure monitor. If you have any type of a tire pressure monitoring system inside your light duty passenger car or truck, it's going to be internal. It's not going to be external like we're going to cover here in a little bit with sensors that go on the outsides of the stem. Um, and within the Winnebago lineup today, uh, we have two chassis. Um, that again provide tire pressure monitoring from the manufacturer. So it's our ProMaster based chassis uh, in the Winnebago Trend and the Winnebago Travado. Um, and then on the uh, Mercedes side, it is limited to the Revel. Uh, so the View, the Navion, the Via, the Rayo, um, any of those Sprinter types of chassis that are above 10,000 pounds gross vehicle weight rating. Uh, will not have tire pressure monitoring, so multi-seal can be used in those as well as a tire pressure monitoring system. So do you have any people with a Travato that just go ahead and get multi-seal because they'd rather just prevent a blowout than constantly be not monitoring their pressure? Not to my knowledge. 
I'm not aware, and that's a good question, so thank you for chatting that in. Um, I'm not aware of anybody that have just literally placed some electrical tape over their uh, tire inflation monitor light. Um, some vehicles actually have an audible alarm as well. Like when, when we mistakenly did Heidi's because I didn't think Heidi's had an internal tire pressure monitoring system, the light came on instantly uh, because it sealed that sensor. And then I had to buy Heidi a new tire, although she didn't let me. Are you sorry? A little bit. Okay. Um, what if but I it allowed us to talk about it today. <laughs> um, a lot of questions regarding getting new tires then. So you have multi-seal. Yep. Ultimately, uh, over um, time, you're still going to have to get new tires eventually down the road. Is there an issue removing it? If I get new tires, is it a mess? Um, good question. So in terms of the transition of um, moving from an existing set of tires to a new set of tires, um, really the question probably centers around is it going to stick to the wheel itself and it will not because again it's not adhesive based uh, it's a loose flowing chemical so if for some reason um, we have to remove multi-seal uh, for a balancing issue or, or anything like that um, it literally can be washed out of the tire because again it's a loose sealant uh, it's not an adhesive so um, it's very simple to clean up um, but it's, you know, it's something that we believe in and, and people around the dealership have heard me say this. If people go with multi-seal and, you know, say down the road they decide to replace their tires, we'll put multi-seal back in those tires for free. It's just something that we believe in. And so don't let that be a deterrent. Some people will actually, if they have um, tires that are midstream, they may put multi-seal in thinking that it's going to extend the life of their tires and it certainly will, especially if you've got a little bit of a bead issue uh, or maybe a leaky valve stem or obviously what we're trying to guard against is a puncture. How is it different than green slime? Okay, so green slime, uh, and literally that's what it's called, um, you can find at Target or at Walmart. Um, it's not an adhesive-based chemical uh, similar to this. However, it is not DuPont Kevlar based. Um, there are two other things that really kind of bother me about green slime. Um, it will only self-heal wounds up to an eighth of an inch, because I've researched this. And um, there's actually three different levels of green slime, but the one that is most co closely assimilates multi-seal is a loose flowing green slime that you can put in your tires. Um, it will only self-heal up to an eighth of an inch, which means literally you're guarding against nails. You're not guarding against punctures, you're not getting, guarding against screws uh, or any other type of uh, impairment to your tire. The other thing that I don't like about green slime is that it has a two-year life and it says right on the packaging that it is good to self-heal that wound for two years. With DuPont Kevlar, with multi-seal, it's for the life of the tire. It becomes part of the tire, so to speak. And so a lot of times this is one of those negative assurances where uh, you may put it in and hopefully you never need it. Can you review any type of warranty associated with it? Yep, so when, when we do multi-seal installations, uh, we back it with a five-year warranty. Um, it will actually, if you do have um, a tire issue, it will replace the tire with no deductible up to $350. It will also, if you do have some type of a curb rash where you actually have to replace the wheel, uh, it will replace the wheel cost up to $600, uh, but it also provides roadside assistance, so it would also include your towing if you have a blowout, but it also provides some towing assistance, or excuse me, some roadside assistance, uh, such as uh, if you need fuel, if you are low on fluids, uh, lockout assistance, or any type of roadside assistance, and that will actually run 24-7. Did I miss anything on that? No. Go ahead. I, we have some questions about compatibility with, with nitrogen, with TPMS. Yep. Maybe some confusion around that. Okay, I just wanted to make sure I covered everything correctly on the warranty. Uh, yeah, and then it also includes um, low battery assistance within the roadside as well. So. Um, and I think that covered everything on the warranty. So compatibility. Uh, so we're going to get into nitrogen here in a second, but I know, I think everyone here at the dealership is wanting to see me run a hammer. 
So this is a tire stand that we have here in the dealership and you can see all the different um, wounds that we've had uh, with, this, um, with this particular tire. Um, to my knowledge, we've not added air to this tire over the life of the tire since we've, we've, we've run multi-seal. And I'm just gonna drive this spike in. So this spike is actually three quarters of an inch and as it tapers, it's around five eighths of an inch. Now you actually have to kind of have the concept that the vehicle is not stationary because obviously somebody's not gonna do this to your tire. But as the tire is rotating, you'll actually hear the multi-seal hiss out and it will self heal the wound. So that's all the way down to the taper. This is a three quarter inch spike. So as I remove this and the tire spins, which is exactly what you'd be doing as you were driving down the road, so as this comes out, I'll spin the tire and you'll hear it stop hissing. So that was some pretty good comedy because I think Brian may have set me up to add a little bit more multi-seal to it, but actually you can, you can hear it now stop hissing and it's self-healing that wound. So another question I have is you guys have to tell me, do I have any on my face? You just hit your shirt a little bit. That's okay. And you have a little in your hair, but you can't see it on camera. Well, it just matches my gray, right? Right. Greg is asking if you have a tow vehicle that does not have internal TPMS, can you have multi-seal installed on the RV and the towed? Uh, you can. If your tow vehicle does not have um, tire pressure monitoring that is internal, so let's say, for example, it's external, uh, which is what we're going to cover here in a second with respect to um, tire pressure monitoring systems and nitrogen, then you can actually add it to your dinghy vehicle as well. Perfect. I feel like I have some in my eye. So. So can you have nitrogen and multi-seal in the same tire? Uh, you can, and that's a good question, and a lot of people will ask us that. Uh, you can absolutely have uh, nitrogen uh, in a vehicle that has multi-seal installed. It's not going to cause any compatibility issues whatsoever, uh, and that's actually a pretty good segue into um, the concept of nitrogen. Uh, maybe go over that first. I do have some questions, but... Go over the, the concept, concept. concept mm -hmm. of nitrogen? Okay. So I was um, not completely aware of the whole concept of nitrogen in tires, and I probably should have because we're in an agriculture economy um, here in, in northern Iowa. <clears throat> so if you think about um, if you've ever been in an aircraft or if you've ever watched NASCAR or IndyCar racing, uh, landing gear and uh, NASCAR racing tires and IndyCars um, all have nitrogen in their tires. And really the concept with nitrogen is really two benefits that we're trying to accomplish. Uh, we're trying to maintain that tire pressure without seeing the highs and the lows of going in and out of freezing temperatures to hot temperatures. The second thing we're trying to do is we're trying to keep those tires nice and cool to extend the life of your tires. So much like um, an aircraft will go to uh, sub-freezing temperatures as it rises and then come back down to a very hot climate, the beauty of nitrogen is that it's not subjective to uh, the elements. So it maintains that PSI. The reason why we want to maintain that PSI is because uh, the pounds per square inch, which is your tire pressure level. Um, the reason why we want to maintain that is to uh, extend the life of your tires, but also to provide better fuel economy. If you recall all the way back to 2008, 2010, when the economy was in recession, if you picked up any USA Today or any newspaper, they would give you tips to save money, maintenance tips in your car. And number one, the number one tip that was always there was to maintain the right tire pressure in your tires because it'll extend the life of your tires and provide better fuel economy. Um, so the concept of nitrogen is that um, we literally, we purge the air, the oxygenated air out of your tires with the nitrogen machine and the company that we use is Nitrofill. Nitrofill is the surviving entity of the merger between Nitrofill and Purigen. And we literally go through two cycles. Um, we will purge all of the oxygenated air out of your tire and fill it with pure nitrogen, 
our goal is that we're trying to get that to between 97 and 99 percent pure nitrogen. Then with our dealership, we actually go through a second cycle and drop it again all the way down to the rim and then fill it back up with nitrogen. So we want that nitrogen content to be as high as possible. Um, not to become the nutty professor, but nitrogen molecules by nature are much larger than oxygen molecules, and so they're not as volatile is the concept. I know I used some big words there, molecules. We should have brought in a whiteboard. This is as close to being a scientist as you're gonna get. I should have worn a white cape instead of a black cape. Okay, so that's really the concept of nitrogen. It's not a big money maker for us whatsoever. Um, it's available at your local co-op if you're in an agriculture area. The reason for that is because obviously what happens over the winter time is you see all of the farm equipment that is most likely stored outdoors or in a pole barn or a machinery shed where it's freezing. And obviously farmers don't want to come out to that equipment uh, in the springtime and have them all on the rims of their wheels. And so you see it a lot in the agriculture industry. You'll feel it every time you take um, an aircraft ride, um, but you'll also see it anytime you watch a NASCAR race or an IndyCar race because every one of those tires are filled with pure nitrogen to keep them cool so that they don't have to replace those tires during the race. And it can be mixed with nitrogen because they really don't mix whatsoever. With multi-seal. Or excuse me, with multi-seal, what did I say? Nitrogen. Well, yeah, you can mix nitrogen with nitrogen. <laughs> that was not well laid out. You can mix it with nitrogen because they're not actually mixing, they're separate. Uh, we're replacing that oxygenated air with pure nitrogen, and then the multi-seal is that non-freezing, loose tire sealant in the tires. And that is compatible with TPMS on its own? You can place nitrogen in any vehicle. In fact, um, all of the light-duty passenger cars and trucks that our family uh, drives, uh, they're all uh, filled with nitrogen because quite honestly it stemmed actually when we used to own the the car dealership across the street um, when we owned a Chevrolet Buick GMC Cadillac dealership uh, literally it was like clockwork um, we would go into winter we would have tire pressure monitoring lights going off uh, because the temperature was dropping then we'd go through winter and we'd come out of winter and as the temperature rose those tire pressure uh, monitoring lights would again come back on because they're sensing high pressure at the time so really we're trying to maintain that tire pressure increase the life of your tires and increase your fuel economy. Can you top it off with regular air if you need to on the road? You can, you can, and that's a good, that's a good question. So thanks for chatting that in, whoever did. Um, but you can absolutely um, mix oxygenated air from any uh, filling station. Uh, you can mix it directly in with the nitrogen. All that it's gonna do is it may take that 99% nitrogen content in your tires and possibly drop it down slightly to say 98, 97, depending upon how much you're going to add back in. Um, but it can absolutely be mixed. We have some questions about cost on both multi-seal yep. and nitrogen. So let's talk about cost of nitrogen first since we're on that topic. Um, and I always like to, um, since I am uh, a CPA by trade, I do like to tend to aggregate things to say, what is it really going to save me? So we talk about better fuel economy. So if you look at the benefits of nitrogen and the studies that they've done, they estimate an increase of fuel economy of five to 10%. So five to 10% doesn't seem like a lot when you're looking at you know, 16 to 18 miles per gallon or whatever your light duty passenger vehicle is. However, if you aggregate that over the course of a year, so let's say you're an RVer and you go for 8,000 miles this year uh, with the current cost of fuel, and if you have a 10% increase in your fuel economy, that's gonna save you about 200 to $400 a year depending upon how fuel efficient your RV is. Um, we do nitrogen for 110 bucks. Um, it's, it's not a money maker for us, it's just something that we believe in. Um, we bought the um, membranes and the, and the machine that will actually um, put pure nitrogen into your tires. Uh, so again, it's 110 bucks, it's not a big money maker for us. Um, nor is multi-seal. Uh, multi-seal uh, with the five-year warranty uh, is 985, and that provides five-year warranty coverage. Again, it'll replace a tire up to $300, uh, and it'll replace a rim up to $600 and provides all of that roadside assistance. But really good question. Great, I think I have questions about TPMS here. So uh, tire pressure monitoring, so let's talk about that a little bit. Um, from 
2006 in its debut with the VIEW and the Navion um, all the way up into the last couple of years, the most common question that we had was how do I check the tire pressure in my inner dual? So most RVs will have dual rear wheels, meaning there's two wheels on each side of the axle. And there is not, by factory installation, um, tire valve extensions. So literally, you have to find a double-sided chuck or climb underneath the vehicle to check that tire pressure inside that inner dual. And it's not a fun job. And so uh, people that um, RV are typically very sensitive to tire pressures, especially when you can't see that. You can't see that inner dual. And so most people, when they're at a truck stop, they're looking, or at least they're looking at their, their tire to see if they're low, um, but very few are actually taking the time to actually check the tire pressure. So what's really become very popular in the last few years are tire pressure monitoring systems. Um, we've kind of become a microwave society that we want everything now, and so um, I'm also a big believer that rather than getting out and checking my tire pressure, um, I'd rather just look at a display. And that's probably what we all do in the vehicle that we drove uh, today. Um, we rely on that tire pressure monitoring system to tell us if that tire pressure is low or if it's high. And in the tire pressure monitoring systems that we have within the RV uh, industry, um, they'll also tell you tire temperature, which can be really important if you're traveling in hot climates or in cold climates. Um, and in some mountainous terrain. That can be really important based on the, the temperature of your tire. Um, you know, I, I experienced a, a situation one time where um, actually a colleague of mine, uh, we were driving to the National RV Trade Show in Louisville, Kentucky. And everybody knows that when it comes to boating and RVing, I'm a very um, safe driver and I drive, drive the speed limits and I'm a, a very safe boater, but I, I kind of have a heavy foot on the road. And so as we were driving to Louisville, uh, we were averaging about 80 miles per hour, and I had a tire pressure monitoring light come on in the Chevy Tahoe that we were driving. So I went to the cluster and pulled up that wheel, and I could see the tire pressure. And I could see the tire pressure slowly going down. We immediately took that first off-ramp that we could find, and halfway up the off-ramp, that tire had shredded, and actually we were on the rim. Point being, it gave us enough time to get out of harm's way. And if you're checking your tire pressure at a truck stop or wherever you get fuel, yes, that's a good practice, but it's not gonna tell you anything when you're driving down the road. And so it's a lot easier to just look over at your tire pressure um, and see what it is, or better yet, let it tell you when it's out of range. So there's a couple of things you can do. If you do want to put on a tire pressure monitoring system, um, the first thing that you absolutely have to do is ensure that you have something like this, which is a metal tire valve extension. So this literally goes from the inner dual, and this bushing secures it through the outer wheel, and then there's literally just a sensor that screws on the end of this valve stem. And so most RVs, will have um, valve extensions that you can use for the outer wheels, but very few will actually have full metal valve stems. And the reason why you want a metal valve stem is because when you screw this sensor on, if you have rubber valves, which is by nature what the factory will put on, whether it's Ford, Mercedes, or a Freightliner, um, literally, if you have a rubber valve stem, this will flutter as you go down the road and literally crack the sensor. And so you have to have metal valve stems if you're gonna do an exterior tire pressure monitoring system. And so on the end of the valve stem, you very simply just screw this cap on and it sends a sensor to the tire pressure monitoring system. Do you have a question you'd like to ask or do you want me to talk about what systems we do? Well. In almost all of our TPMS installations, are we having to install metal valve stems in conjunction? Yeah, in, in nearly the case with every one of them. Uh, and the reason for it is because uh, Mercedes, first of all, they don't provide valve stem extensions from the inner duals to the outer duals, or excuse me, to the outer wheels. Um, and most um, Ford, most Freightliner models, 
um, they also will not have uh, metal valve stems or metal valve stem extensions from the inner duals to the outer. So in most cases, if, if we're going to put tire pressure monitoring on, we're going to have to also put on metal valve stems. And you know, this is something that you really want somebody that's experienced to do um, because you don't want a leaky valve stem. You want somebody that has done this before because you also don't want to just replace the ends. You want to replace the entire stem. And what I mean by that is you actually want to replace the entire stem that goes through the tire, the valve itself, and make sure that it's metal all the way through. Uh, because you don't want to just screw a metal valve stem on a rubber valve, if that makes sense. So we literally will drop, we'll, we'll break the tire down and we'll put in metal valve stem extensions because again, going down the road, you don't want these little sensors to vibrate and crack. And they will, they will within a few miles. And so what is that displaying on in your cab? Okay, so there's a couple of different ways you can do it. Um, we have a few models now um, with Winnebago um, that actually do have a factory installed tire pressure monitoring system in them. Um, as we mentioned when we talked about multi-seal and um, nitrogen, uh, we talked about the fact that the Travados already have factory installed tire pressure monitoring. That light will come on automatically. There's nothing you need to do. Same thing with the Revel. Um, but for those RVs that don't have a factory installed system, um, the brand that we use and that we've had the best success with is a company called TireMinder. And this is the A1A version of TireMinder. Um, TireMinder is rated by Motorhome Magazine as the best tire pressure monitoring system for the RV lifestyle. And it's also the number one selling tire pressure monitoring system uh, for the last six years in a row. And the reason for it, um, there's a couple of different things. One, it's proven it works extremely well. So that's obviously what we want. But there's a couple of reasons why it's proven. Um, the first reason is you always get a good calibrated reading to your display because tire pressure monitoring systems from TireMinder actually include what they call a Rhino Boost antenna. And so that's an antenna that we'll install midway through the coach or towards the rear if we know that you're gonna hook up a tire pressure monitoring system to a dinghy tow vehicle, so something that you're gonna tow for on the ground or maybe even a tow dolly. Um, so you get the best reception, but it's also very easy to use. Um, this is the display that comes with it. It very simply plugs into a 12 volt outlet to recharge. It does not have to be uh, plugged in all the time. So it has an internal battery. So it's, it literally has a charging capability and then it can be placed anywhere. It looks just like another smartphone. It will tell you and it allows you to customize how much in and out of range you are with respect to tire pressures, but also tire temperatures. The other cool thing about tire pressure monitoring systems from TireMinder is that they have a lifetime battery replacement program for the sensors. Uh, these sensors literally have a small little battery inside of them um, that does have to be replaced and you'll get an alert when it needs to be replaced. Um, but uh, you can contact TireMinder and they're estimated to run about 9 to 14 months, um, but they'll send you batteries at no charge. And so those it's are a, easy it's to replace. To be replaced. And, and anyone can replace them. Anybody can shot. replace them, it's just a screw-on sensor. Yep. So again, it's, it's monitoring tire pressure. If you want a little bit more tolerance, maybe you're in a climate, gets really, really cold at night, warm during the day, uh, especially like kind of in the mountainous areas where it does warm up during the day, but it gets cold at night. You can expand that tolerance so it's not so honed in and going off that frequently. Um, but you can also really tighten it down if you really want to be precise about tire pressures. But literally, you just look over and look at it. The beauty of this A1A system is that it will calibrate up to 22 wheels at one point. So obviously, we don't have 22 wheels, but we have six on most RVs, eight with a tag axle. Then you factor in the fact that your dinghy vehicle is probably going to have four wheels. And that's something that people often overlook is the fact that literally your tow vehicle, you can be monitoring the tire pressure of your tow vehicle when you're driving the RV. Because even though it might have an internal tire pressure monitoring system, that's great, but your partner or spouse isn't gonna be riding in that car. They're sitting next to you in the cockpit of the RV. And so you can be monitoring your tow vehicle while you're driving down the road. The reason why they have that expansion up to 22 wheels is 
Some people have multiple dinghy vehicles, or some people will tow a travel trailer, or some people will tow a utility trailer, or a boat, or whatever behind their RV, and it will calibrate that many different setups. So expanding to a tow car or whatever you're towing behind you really isn't a new kit, it's an expansion pack of some type. Yeah, actually this comes with six sensors, so it will take care of your RV, obviously. Um, and then in addition to the six sensors, uh, you can purchase additional sensors, which are not expensive, and apply them to your utility trailer, your tow dolly, or if you tow four on the ground, known as dinghy style, uh, you can do that as well. Can you sync it up to your phone? Uh, you can. Uh, you could Bluetooth it to your phone. That is a different system than the A1A. So if you want it to go explicitly to your smartphone or tablet, we can do that. Um, but really what we're kind of trying to do is minimize distractions in driving. So we're trying to kind of keep those separate. But if you want that, it's actually about $120 less expensive to go to the Bluetooth version because obviously you're not going to buy the hardware. But it still comes with that Rhino Boost sensor. Um, and it still has the capability of doing up to 22 different wheels. But it is a different system. It's not the A1A. And the A1A, I mean, you would know better than I, Heidi, but it's probably 99% of the tire pressure monitoring systems that we do is the A1A. It's the most common one, and it's the best-selling one in the RV industry. It is. Good question. So if I wanted TPMS, does my current RV need to have any existing equipment or can you start from scratch regardless of age of RV? Uh, regardless of age of RV, uh, we can equip tire pressure monitoring systems to anything. And um, if you don't have metal valve stems, that's where we'd want to start. Um, literally, to, it's not a lot of money, but to replace all six metal valve stems or uh, with metal valve stems uh, runs $420 parts and labor and we do use the uh, Borg metal valve stem kits. Greg has a good question. Are your TPMS installed systems flow through or do you have to remove the sensor to add air? Uh, that's a good question. That's a really good question. In fact, I've never had that asked. Um, but to add air, you remove the sensor because that just replaces the cap then you add air to the tires, and then you put the sensor back on. And the sensor looks really nothing more than, uh, it really looks like a valve stem tire cap on steroids. It's just a little bit bigger. And then this unscrews, and that's where the battery's located. But there's not a pass through, if, that, if Greg, that's, if that's what you're asking. Um, there's not actually a stem on the outside that allows air to pass through. Some questions on spare tires. Yeah. Uh, in terms of multi-seal, <coughs> nitrogen, and TPMS, do, do any or all of those get installed in the spare as well, or is that not common practice? Uh, it's not common practice, but it's simple to do. Um, you know, and, and really, again, you'd want to have a metal valve stem because that, that vehicle's still shaking going down the road, whether it's mounted uh, vertically on the rear or up underneath. Um, but we certainly can. It's not a problem. How much does a tire weigh? And if I am getting multi-seal, can I pick up some cargo carrying capacity by getting rid of my spare tire? Oh, that's a good question. Um, and I don't know, maybe one of you guys could just look that up real quick. Weight of a 16 inch wheel. Um, I'm gonna guess it's 40 to 60 pounds. Uh, if you decided that you want, and the question was, can I get rid of my spare tire if I have multi-seal? Uh, you absolutely can. In fact, that's the reason why most light duty passenger cars and trucks right now no longer have spare tires. It's the same reason why our Travato doesn't uh, because those tires are so readily available. Heaven forbid, if you would need one, you can get one. Um, but really the tire um, inflation monitoring systems that, that we're using will help prevent that in, in conjunction with like multi-seal. But really the, the, the reason for it is because as, as car and truck manufacturers, are trying to meet the EPA portfolio fuel economy requirements. They're trying to minimize weight. It's the reason why you saw Ford go to an all aluminum truck. Uh, you're seeing General Motors do that. They're trying to free up weight. They're not trying to free up weight for cargo carrying capacity like an RV is. They're trying to get better fuel economy to meet those EPA requirements. So it's the same thing we could be doing within the RV industry by removing that spare tire, much like the ProMaster Travato has. And you have a weight to correct me. I didn't find an exact weight. I think you're about right. At 40 to 60? 
I think it might be maybe 40, the lower end is more accurate. Okay, so we'll call it 40. Yeah. It was a guess. I told you I didn't know. Neil has a comment on our website. Yeah. He had stems replaced with regular rubber high pressure stems five years ago okay. when he had new tires installed. Over the last few weeks, he had one flat and tires rotated. Um, it seems disturbing that the stems cause them to leak requiring replacement. He's thinking of having all the other stems replaced, guessing they are getting less pliant. Is uh, that, that a reality? Can be, that can be true, absolutely. Um, just like um, rubber degrades over time, and, and kind of the consensus now in research is that you can go a little bit longer before you need to replace your tires than you were before. But just like that, even if it's a high pressure rubber valve stem or any type of a rubber valve stem, that can break down over time. Now, one of the cool things about it is that multi-seal will heal that. It will heal that gap around a rubber valve stem. So that could be one solution. Um, but really what you wanna do long-term is have metal valve stems uh, installed. That's really the best case scenario. Tom has a question on Facebook. Can you show where the booster is installed? Uh, we can, and it depends a little bit based on the RV. So in a coach like this, this is a 24-foot uh, Navion, uh, we would install it mid-coach because that's really about all we need. It does require 12 volt, uh, so generally we install it uh, inside the step well because we've got access to the batteries. If we have a much longer coach, uh, such as a diesel pusher, even a tag axle, we'll actually install that booster uh, inside the electrical compartment near the rear axle so that you get better range. But in most 24 to 26 foot coaches, we're gonna put it midship, mid coach, uh, right near the auxiliary house batteries because it's the easiest way to get 12 volt, but still provides enough capability. That Rhino boost sensor that, that Tire uh, Minder provides in their A1A systems is phenomenal. And we really have never had an issue of getting a good reading from the sensors. Tom's also wondering, is there a light on that booster where he can look just to know that it's working? Well, that's a good question. It was Tom that stumped me? Yes. Tom gets a prize. Uh, I can look. And we, we even can, know can... Tom, so we have his address, I think. I don't know if it does. We can keep going with questions. Can you revisit again? Did you say a TPMS needs power? Uh, actually, the A1A system, uh, it has a rechargeable battery built into it. Uh, so it doesn't tie up your 12 volt um, auxiliary outlet, which is really what people tend to worry about. Is it gonna tie up the one that I'm gonna charge my smartphone or tablet with? And yes, it does. So does Tom win a prize? Tom still wins a prize. Okay. That's a good question. I've never had that question asked, but that's a good point because um, it will still read the sensors from the unit, but this boost sensor actually improves the, the reach of it. Uh, but it actually has two lights on it. It has a power light, and then it also has a signal light. So the last But question. there was a second question in there that I think I missed. No, you've got it. it. Power. You just covered it. Oh, what powers them? Yeah. Thank you. So obviously the Bluetooth systems, you need 12 volt for the Rhino um, antenna blaster. Obviously just your smartphone or tablet. For the A1A system, um, this is the Rhino boost sensor. This requires 12 volt. And then the A1A system, the actual LCD panel that you receive, uh, that actually has a rechargeable battery in it. And then each of the sensors has um, individual uh, batteries with them. And again, Tire Miner has that battery replacement program. Last question that I have is, we travel with a tow vehicle for recreation, but we do use our RV for business purposes at times, and we have a utility trailer. If I, can I have TPMS on those two different <coughs> towables, basically, if, without much effort? Absolutely, and that's really the flexibility and the expansion capability of a uh, tire minder system. Um, if you really wanted to save a few bucks, you could just unscrew the sensors and move them um, trailer to trailer. Um, however, um, if you just wanted to buy the additional sensors, whatever you have hooked up that is within that broadcast area, um, will calibrate directly to the tire minder system. So it's as flexible and it's expandable as you want it to be. 
I'll ask the dumb question, and if you, this is my question for the record, if one of your sensors, your battery is dead or you haven't used it for a while, how do you, I would imagine your monitor shows that? It does, yep, it does. The monitor will display if you need to replace a battery. And, and actually, they come with two batteries per sensor, and then they have the replacement program, so you're always gonna have one uh, as a spare. So, really some great questions today. And uh, we will actually continue to staff our chat here for a little bit on the three different channels that you're watching right now, whether it is our website at Litson.com, uh, Facebook Live, or YouTube Live. And so we'll continue to keep those chat lines open, but also keep in mind the chat that you actually see on our website uh, on Litson.com, whether you chat in or whether, whether or not you elect to have a text conversation, we actually staff that during normal business hours with true factory trained professionals. So on the sales side, we have our factory trained sales consultants. On the parts side, uh, we have our award winning uh, parts sales consultants that can help you. Uh, and that's during uh, normal business hours. Outside of business hours, we do use a third party service that we can still um, chat with you, answer basic questions, and then certainly get back to you the next day with anything that those, those people aren't able to help out with. Also keep in mind, we can do this same type of a live broadcast on a secure part of our website where only you're the person watching it in the comfort of your own home or office uh, at any point during the day on any of our in-stock RVs with our factory trained consultants. In fact, we have one coming up here just after the webcast uh, on the new Fuse uh, 23F floor plan. And so um, we can do that same type of a live interactive presentation out on our lot, inside our studio, uh, whatever is convenient for you. It makes for a great three-way dialogue where we can conference in a partner or a spouse um, from wherever they're at to see the things that are important as you use your RV. Any other lingering questions? So again, I want to thank you all for joining us today uh, as we broadcast live today in our marketing studio, uh, only one mile north of the Winnebago Motorized Coach Division of Winnebago Industries right here in Forest City, Iowa, where we covered enhancing your tire life uh, through multi-seal, through the use of nitrogen and tire pressure monitoring systems here at Litson RV.